Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your ninth AngularJS tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about controllers. <laughs> okay then guys, so in the last tutorial what we did is make this module right here and we gave it a name of My Ninja App. And then we said to Angular, hey look, we want this module to control all the functionality within the application. And to do that, we assigned this directive here, ng app, equal to the value of this module. Okay, so now this module is controlling all this functionality. However, what we didn't do, because I forgot to do it, was link up to this app.js. So this currently wouldn't work. So let's do that now. We'll say script source equals, and then we'll just right click this over here and get the project path and paste it right in there. Okay, so now that it's linked up, now it recognizes this module, okay? So, the next thing we wanna do is work on controllers. So we already know that this module is gonna contain all of our code, and it's gonna be built up of controllers, factory services, etc. So we'll just take a look at controllers today. Now, a controller essentially controls our application data, and different controllers are used to control different parts of the app. So for example, we could have a controller which co uh, controls the registration process of the application or a controller which controls the, uh, the contact form of an application, okay? So let's create a controller. And the way we do that is just by referencing this variable first of all, my ninja app, and then saying dot controller. And then we need to give this controller a name. So let's call it ninja controller. And this is a typical naming convention in Angular. It's always something, then controller, okay? Or a variation of controller. And we always use camel case as well. So the next thing we want to do is pass in a function. And then within this function is where all the magic is going to happen. So in here is going to be all the code which controls this section of the web page or of the web, uh, web application but we don't currently have that section set up in the application view. So let's do that now. Let's come over here and we'll just delete all this stuff right here and we'll also get rid of that data. We're not gonna be using that anymore. And we're gonna do a simple div tag and then apply a directive to it called ng controller. And then within this, we put the controller name, which is this ninja controller. So we'll copy that and paste it right in here. And now guys, within these two divs right here, or this one div, is where our ninja controller is gonna control. This is kind of like the scope of its power. All right, so we can now pass data between this controller, this section here on the application, and this controller, all right? And to pass data between the two, we need to use something called the scope object in Angular. Now, the scope is essentially like the binding part between the HTML view and this JavaScript controller. And it's available to both of them. So we can apply our model or our data as well as functions if we need them to the scope object here in the controller. And then all of that will be accessible to us in the HTML view. So when we're thinking of MVC, we've got our view in the HTML, then we've got a control here in the JavaScript and we have our model or our data on the scope which is passed between the view and the controller, okay? But to use the scope within this controller, we need to pass it into the function because it is a dependency, okay? We're depending on the scope. And we'll talk about dependency a little bit more later. But for now, you just have to pass this through. Then we can use it in this controller. So let's do a simple example. We'll say scope.message equals, and then we'll set that equal to, hey y'all, something like that, right? And then we'll click save. And then right about here, what we're gonna do is just come in and we'll say P, and then we're gonna output that message. And we just need to put message. We don't need to write scope.message because scope is implied. It's implied that we're just grabbing those objects or variables or properties off the scope, okay? So let's save this bad boy now and check out what happens in the browser. We get that message, okay? So we've passed that message. We've set it here on the scope and we've passed that message through to this section right here in the control in the ninja controller area and we've output it by just using this expression saying message if we try to use this outside of that area then this wouldn't work okay it only recognizes that message inside this controller okay because this is the only area that that scope applies this is the scope essentially of that controller okay 
So let's add some data. Let's uh, say scope dot ninjas equals an array, and then we'll say uh, Yoshi Crystal Ryu, and of course Sean. All right. So now we have our ninjas. And uh, that's our scope dot ninja. So let's go into the HTML, and we're going to do that ng repeat directive again. So we'll say ul, and then we need an li tag, and then within this li tag, we need our ng repeat directive, which is just going to loop through all of our um, array data, and we'll say ninjas. Oh, sorry, ninja in ninjas. Okay, so ninjas is the name of this variable right here on the scope. Okay, so that's why we're putting it there. And remember, this can be anything. If you need a refresh on ng repeat, just hit the back button, go back a couple of lessons. Um, and then what we're gonna do is just output this ninja. So let's save that. And now we're gonna see, oops, I've put ninjas. That's why they're coming out as arrays. Just ninja. And now we're gonna see each one of these output, the same as before, but now, it looks a lot nicer in this code. We're using the controller to give us this data, which is much better practice than just putting the data on uh, ng init. And uh, that controller is passing through this data on the scope object, which we have access to within this section here, okay? Because we've said that this section is controlled by the Ninja controller. So there's one more thing I quickly wanna talk about. And uh, that is this thing right here, this dependency. So we're passing th uh, this scope through as a dependency in this controller. And that's because we're depending on that scope, right? We need it. Now, this is fine, but to protect this variable from minification, then we need to do this a slightly different way. And basically what I mean by that is when we start to minify JavaScript files in AngularJS, this doesn't always work. We sometimes need to protect the variable names. So the way we do that is by passing the function and any dependencies through an array after the controller name. So we do our square bracket open and we'll put our square bracket end at the end of the function, okay? Because it's gonna control, or it's gonna hold rather, the dependencies and the function. And then we define our dependencies in quotation marks like that. So I'm gonna say, scope is one of them and then I do a comma and then the last one is always generally the function right there if we had other dependencies they'd go on like that within here so dependency you know so we make a list of them like that and the function would normally be the last one but as well as putting them there we do have to put them in the brackets as well right here so we do you know the other function uh, the other dependencies right there whatever we put there would be there okay so that is the best way I think of doing the dependencies um, you don't have to do it for this tutorial if you don't like. I'm just going to keep it that way for now because it is best practice. Okay, so I'm going to save that and uh, everything should still work. And uh, there we go, guys. That is controllers for you. Uh, we're going to take a look at, in more depth at controllers as we go through this, uh, this playlist. But if you've got any questions for now, feel free to leave those down below. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to share, subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll see you in the very next tutorial.